This is by far the most damaging testimony that we've seen from the January 6th committee to date against former President Donald Trump. And for the first time, because the way this breaks down is most people who support the former president have not even been watching the January 6th committee hearings. They seem to not be interested or not care. Uh, But this testimony that I'm about to tell you about right now is for the first time actually showing signs of getting the attention, if not moving people, who are on Donald Trump's side, almost as if it's being seen as a bridge too far. That's how damaging this new testimony is about the president of the United States. And think about this, and I'm going to play it for you, but think about this. It could get worse. It could get worse because the testimony is already on the record, but it now has to be substantiated, right? It has to be verified. And who can verify the fact that the president of the United States is accused of attacking a Secret Service agent. The Secret Service agent himself. But can a Secret Service agent be forced to testify against the president of the United States? Can they call this this member of the Secret Service and say, did the president of the United States attack you? Because he could verify what could be one of the most mind-blowing accusations that I have heard in my 30-some year career as a journalist on CNN, on Fox, on Univision, on NBC. I've never heard anything quite like this. And we have an answer for you, which is stunning, by the way, and ironic how that particular Secret Service member could be called to testify against the former president of the United States. And we're going to take you through all of this. But we want to start with the testimony itself. This is this is Cassidy Hutchinson. Cassidy Hutchinson is the assistant of Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows is the chief of staff for the president of the United States, a very important position. So she's there. She's with the president. She's listening to the conversation. She's talking to Mr. Meadows and talking to Mr. Trump as well. And, and the first thing that she reveals, fascinatingly enough, something we didn't know, obviously, is that the president of the United States um, apparently knew that the protesters, who remember, he told them in his speech to go to the Capitol, to march to the Capitol, the president of the United States knew that they were armed, that they had weapons, on them at the time. He knew this. So says Miss Hutchinson. Let's take a listen. When we were in the offstage announced tent, I was part of a conversation. I was in the I was in the vicinity of a conversation where I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Let the people in. Take the effing mags away. Think about that. The President of the United States is saying, let my people in. I don't care that they have weapons. These are the people who would eventually riot and storm the Capitol with weapons. And that would result in the death of at least one Capitol Police officer. And the President of the United States is saying, let them in. And when he says mags, that means metal detectors. The President of the United States at the time wants the metal detectors taken down so that the protesters who may have weapons cannot be found out, that their weapons cannot be detected. That's a fascinating, a fascinating revelation that comes to us from uh, Ms. Hutchinson. Here's the second point. The president, with those people who had weapons, right, he wanted to join them. The president of the United States, according to Mrs. Hutchinson, and again, this is something we never knew. We've always assumed that the president of the United States did not. In fact, people have accused him of being a coward because he said to these people, go storm the Capitol and I'll be there with you. But he didn't go. And many on the left have criticized the president saying, yeah, that's real nice. He told them to go. They got in trouble, but you didn't go. Well, guess what? That accusation doesn't fly anymore, at least not against Donald Trump, because he did want to go. And there's evidence, according to Mrs. Hutchinson, that he desperately wanted to go. Let's let's listen to uh, let's listen to this piece of sound. Here again is Mrs. Hutchinson describing uh, the president's desire to storm the Capitol with the rioters. The president said something to the effect of, "I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now." To which Bobby responded, "Sir." 
we have to go back to the West Wing. So there's the president of the United States expressing his desire to join the protesters who he knew had weapons as they charged or assaulted the Capitol building to stop the election of Joe Biden. Think about what I just said. That's the context. The president of the United States, knowing that these uh, protesters had weapons, wanted to join them. So a president of the United States was planning to be one of the attackers of the Capitol against his own government at the time. He was still the president. Against his own government? Again, it's jaw-dropping, right? If true, jaw-dropping. And here's probably the most interesting part of all. He was so forthright. His conviction that he needed to do that was so large at the time that he actually scuffled, almost got into a fight with a Secret Service member, a gentleman named Robert Engel, who was handling the transportation of the president at the time. Remember, he just finished giving his speech, and now he gets into the beast, is what they call the presidential limousine, and he's supposed to go back to the West Wing. He needs to go back to the White House, but he says, no, I don't want to go to the West Wing. I want to go to the Capitol with the folks who are about to storm the Capitol. And this gets weird <laughs> and this gets nasty. Here it is. President reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. The President of the United States is in a physical altercation inside of a vehicle, apparently, with a Secret Service member who is telling him, Mr. President, you are not, we're not taking you to the Capitol. We're taking you to the White House. And he says to that Secret Service, I am the effing President of the United States. You will do what I say. And then, according to this testimony, it's, uh, it's, it, it turns into a scuffle with the president actually, according to her, grabbing for, she calls it the clavicle. What does that mean? There's a way we can know what this means. And this is where I imagine the ax could fall. And that is if this Secret Service member testifies against the president. Now, what are the chances that this Secret Service member could testify against the president? Could it, This is somebody who has to be with the president and sees all of his personal stuff. So generally speaking, it's always been considered that a Secret Service person should not be forced to testify against the president. Except there's an exception. And this is very ironic. The law was changed when... President Clinton had a relationship with Monica Lewinsky. And the Republicans wanted to hear from the Secret Service men who were around the president to find out if they saw him having a relationship with Monica Lewinsky. And in that decision by the Supreme Court, they said, sorry, yes. Secret Service can testify against the president. That's the decision they made with President Clinton and Monica Lewinsky's affair so there is now precedent, which means if the Democrats now say we want that Secret Service member to testify based on the president that was set by President Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, Robert Engels will testify against the president of the United States. And that, <laughs> that could be the hammer that proves that a president of the United States attacking a member of his own armed forces. How would that look? I want, to bring, I want to bring Scotty into this conversation. Scotty is, um, hey, look, you and I have been working together a long time, doing news, uh, doing talk shows. Uh, you're a producer. On that end, I'm on this. I, I, have you ever, have you ever, as long as you and I have been working together or before, heard of anything this crazy? You couldn't even write a book or a movie where this would be believable. I, I mean, there is actually a movie where... Uh, the president drives and has a high-speed chase on the South Lawn, uh, White House Down, with Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum. So I guess some of it's believable, but no, 
it left me speechless, and that's hard to do. You were you watching this live? I wasn't. I was not watching this live. I, not only was I watching it live, but when I had to pick my children up from uh, summer camp, I got in my car. First thing I did was put right onto CNN, uh, the news channels, and, and I, I was it was breathtaking. My kids in the car saying, "Daddy, I want to listen." I couldn't. I couldn't get out of the car. <laughs> I was just talking to my staff here, and one of the first things I said to, this, to them was, "I can't wait to see this movie." <laughs> I, I mean, can, can you imagine who's going to play the president? Who's the president attacking a Secret Service member because he wants to go to a riot where people are going to attack the capital of his government? You, Scotty, I mean, when you said you can't make this shit up, you're right. You can't make this and, shit up. And, and right? President, former President Trump is not a small guy. He's 6'3". They say he's 230. But, you know... <laughs> A guy like that lunging at you, I don't care how much training you have. I mean, that's that's got to be quite a sight. I'll tell you, um, it's uh, it's as bizarre as anything we've seen. I want to bring somebody else into the conversation. Lawyer A.J. Uh, Paligar, former state prosecutor, 50 jury trials, 50 bench trials. A.J., to say that you have experience with the law uh, would be an understatement. Um, and, and I think we should probably start with the whole, and here's the other thing, right? This whole Monica Lewinsky thing. So it turns out, irony of ironies, that Donald Trump might have to have his own Secret Service guy testify against him because the Republicans once forced the Secret Service guy who was there when President Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky to testify. It, it, are we getting this right, Counselor? You know, this whole thing is mind blowing, Rick. And, you know, as Scotty said, I don't think this could be scripted. I, it sounds like this this entire thing was staged in a Hollywood movie set. Um, the legal implications that Trump faces as a result of his conduct on that on the 6th is is far stretched. I mean, um, I don't know what's going to come of it, but when it comes to criminal charges like as it relates to his conduct, he faces conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government by preventing. Yeah, but let's uh, take it. But 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 hold on, hold on, counselor. Let's take let's take these one at a time because you know what? Okay. Here's how I see it. I'm I'm going to disagree with you. Um, he said he didn't care that the people were armed who were going to the Capitol. It's not against the law to not care if people were armed. He said he wanted to join them in attacking the Capitol. He didn't do it. He just said he wanted to. It's not against the law to want to do something. And then he had a, a he scuffled with a Secret Service agent. I mean, I don't see a big crime there. I mean, I, I see the harm politically. I see the public relations manifestations. But legally, those three things that we just presented, do you see a charge in any of those? A serious charge that could, that's going to be brought forth against him? Um, I don't, I don't think so because I mean, it's locker room talk as he says himself, he's, he's in a limousine, he's communicating with his inner circle. Um, he's not going on a public station and giving a speech about his, his motives here. And the most serious crime that I see is a battery charge, which is a first degree misdemeanor in most States, um, against the right. secret service agent. And that's assuming he wants to prosecute, which in this case, he probably doesn't. And so... Given the context of what he's done and his outlandish behavior throughout, I guess, the whole presidency, I mean, whether you love or hate the guy, he's very vocal with his entire belief structure. And he makes it clear. He wants everyone to know what he's thinking. And so, so in I, actuality, I don't know. So, I don't yeah, think that, that, so. Listen, in actuality, when we go down most of these accusations, they're obviously the type of accusations which make us think, my God, this guy's the president of the United States and he's doing these things. But as far as actual charges, with one exception, with one notable exception, I think, and Scotty, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I know we've heard the president said he didn't care if they killed the vice president. That's weird. But again, that's not against the law. We know that the president was told by his attorney general, uh, all this stories about the election being fake. It's all quote, according to the attorney general, Mr. President, it's bullshit. That's what his own attorney general told him, who is the law of the land, the attorney general, right? 
So he didn't believe him. That's not a big deal. I don't think either. Then again, you know, some people are going to say, well, you're giving Trump a pass. What I think, Scotty, that is a problem for the president of the United States is that he garnered $250 million or so, give or take a couple of bucks, I guess, from his own supporters by telling them, send me money and I'll use it for my legal defense fund. And at least according to the testimony that we've heard, instead, he used it at Trump hotels. He paid friends. He paid his son's uh, girlfriend to give a $60,000 speech that day. There we start getting into what I believe is malfeasance. I'll go to you, Scotty, and then I want to go to the counselor agent. Uh, Scotty, get, get yeah, us started. Yeah, you know, anytime money with campaign with the campaign laws, it always is a little bit fishy. But it's man, it's really bad. It's a bad look, especially if you're one of the people that donated that money, thinking you're going to be donating it to the legal fund that's going to help get Donald Trump elected for the fake election. That it's it's disturbing that the money is used that way when they're promising it one thing, and, and if it's not illegal, it should be, and he should be held accountable for that money. Disturbing is one thing, but is it a violation of the law to say you have a legal defense fund when in actuality you don't have a legal defense fund? And 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 basically all you're asking for are campaign donations, which you can use as you want. Uh, AJ, you want to tackle that? Well, I think that was his MO this whole time. It was to garner money to use for his own personal gain, um, whether it was defending him in this particular situation or continuing this so-called election fraud. So the real question is, can it be proven? Um, and I don't know how it was set up, but if there's possible allegations of the misappropriation of funds, that potentially could be a federal crime. Um, now, the details of which, I'm not sure if, if we're at that stage yet where it's being thoroughly investigated. I know you brought it up, Rick. But I, I agree with you in one context. It's like this goose chase about every little detail that occurred within the Trump camp up to the January 6th riots and ongoing seems to be like a never-ending saga that whether or not anything's going to come of it or is it going to be a complete waste of tax dollars? We just don't know. And I think time I, I, I just that. I, 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 listen, I, I keep hearkening back to the fact that of everything he's done, the one thing that if you ask my mother or my father or even my friends who love Donald Trump, common people on the street, and you said... He said, send me money. And when they sent him the money, he didn't use it for what he told them he would use it for. I mean, I don't want to make a far-fetched example, but if I said right now on the air, please send me money because I want to help the poor children of my community and I got a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, and I put that in my own pocket, or I paid my kids, or I bought a house. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent, Rick. And it's all about I the mean, devil's in the details. Like, what is the fine print when he's accepting these donations? Before you click send, are you required to sign or agree to some sort of legalities that clearly state Mr. Trump can use the money for whatever reason he sees fit? And this is considered a donation into this agreement. And so I think that's really what it's going to be about is, it, again, can it be proven were there any ethical violations due to these use of this money? And if that can be proven, it should be pursued. I, I don't know what avenue. I don't know if that's, is that even an investigation right now? Is that ongoing? The misappropriation yeah, that's, of these funds? If what we're seeing in this January 6th hearing is essentially a setup for something the Attorney General, uh, Merrick Garland, can now take and use to prosecute then I would think that might be something we might be hearing about uh, sometime soon. Let's go back to public relations. Do you believe, Scotty, that this is the first time, or maybe you don't, maybe you think there's, a, there's other stuff out there, and maybe you think this isn't. You have friends who are Trump supporters, faithful Trump supporters, I'm sure. We all do, right? Do you think this new testimony, this new information is the kind of thing that will shake their faith or their loyalty? I, I think it, there's two parts to it. I think, uh, one, watching Fox News directly after this, they were speechless. And watching Fox News last night, 
there was barely any mention of her or a testimony of, or any of it on any of the programs. Hannity made a small mention of it, I believe, but nobody, Tucker, nobody mentioned it. As far as friends, normal hmm. people on the street, people I know, it doesn't make a difference. I, I mean, when he said, what did he say a few years ago, he would go on Fifth Ave and shoot somebody? I hate to break it to everybody, but that's the truth, man. These people, I call them Cult yeah. 45 members because it doesn't make a difference what he does. It's the word of God. And guess what? Um, it's the word of God. The, the word of Trump is the word of God. Is that what you're God saying? God shows him. Therefore, it's the word of God. Um, AJ, <laughs> let me move along to you before we get too religious in this conversation. Um do, do you think this is the beginning of what could be uh, a, a, almost a catapultish effect on Trump, where this kind of information will eventually filter down to people who are his supporters who will think, you know, I like the guy, but this may be just a little too much. That's yeah. You know, I've got a lot of friends that voted for Trump and support Trump. But I'll tell you, they were relieved when they no longer had to check their Twitter <laughs> account or see Trump's face on the news every single day. And it's kind of like the calm is settling like after the storm. Trump's base is tremendously loyal. The people are going to vote for him are going to continue to vote for him. But I do think he's alienated a lot of his his, his supporters uh, because they just they just don't want to deal with the emotional roller coaster, which is a part of yeah. Trump's presidency. That's an interesting point you make. And, and, I, and I think you're on to something. There are a lot of people who really believe in this man and will follow him to the end. But then there's those people in the middle, my friends, people I know who are business people, doctors, lawyers, successful people who are not stupid people. They like Donald Trump because they like his policies, even though they don't like him and some of the vile things that he's done or we've heard about in the past. And what you're saying is it's that middle part, that middle support that uh, he may have uh, cut into with uh, some of these accusations. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, AJ Palliger, let me uh, say thank you for uh, joining us and for uh, taking us through your uh, explanation. We look forward to uh, hearing from you again. And if anybody needs a good lawyer out there, there he is. Thank you. A South Rick. Florida man like myself. AJ, thanks so much for being thank with you. us. And as usual, thanks, Scotty. Thank you. Good to talk to you, man. So here's what we're going to continue to do. I mean, it's called Rick Sanchez News. It's a podcast. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on Apple, wherever you get your podcast. We're going to do this thing in English, and we're going to do this in Spanish. We're going to attack the stories that often are told, and we're going to tell it from a uniquely wide-angle lens, because we're Latinos, Latinos in America, which gives us a little bit of a different perspective. So we're a part of Agua Media. We're glad you're there. Look for us on YouTube and subscribe as well. And we'll be here for you. Fighting for the truth. Every chance we get. I'm done.